everyone, my name is Sarah and I'm a counsellor. Today I would like to talk about shame. So shame is something that a lot of children of narcissists feel. Some will be aware of, I feel ashamed of myself, I feel embarrassed about myself. Other people will feel it as a feeling of I'm wrong in some way, I'm inherently bad in some way. There are different ways it can show up. In this video, I'd like to talk about why children of narcissists feel so much shame and what steps can be taken to change that. There's an article on shame on my website, childrenofnarcissist.org.uk, if you'd like to go over there to have a look at that. Shame, the role of shame in surviving trauma. Shame is a state of hypoarousal. So if we look at the window of tolerance, we have hypoarousal, which is when our nervous system is shut down, it feels depressed, lethargic, numb, unmotivated. And then we have hyperarousal, which is when we're overreactive, our thoughts are unclear, we're distressed, and we're agitated. And the ideal place to be is in our window of tolerance. But when we're in hypoarousal, this means our nervous system is triggered into a defensive response of freezing, submitting. Hyperarousal is the fight flight response, and hypoarousal is the freeze and submit response. And ideally, we'll be in our window of tolerance. And in my video, triggers and how they work. I discuss this in more detail. Shame is a state of hypoarousal. Some symptoms are a flat effect. This means the behaviours of the person are flat. The feelings feel flat. Numbness, disgust, despair and hopelessness. It is the mammalian defence of feigned death and total submission. And it serves the function of invoking submission responses this can maintain connection to attachment figures. So what that means is if we have a parent who is difficult to get on with, shall we say, then attaching to that parental figure who we need for our survival is very difficult because they're frightening to us and they're abusive and harmful. But we need to attach to them. So how do we do this? How do we attach to someone who we're scared of? We go into these submissive responses. All our needs are suppressed. Our feelings are shut down as much as possible. Our negative feelings are turned onto ourselves rather than onto the outside world. And this allows us to attach to a parent who's narcissistic because the alternative is almost impossible. Shame is a survival response which is part of the submit mammalian defence. It is a body response which has many negative self-destructive thoughts attached to it, such as, I am no good, nobody likes me, I will never amount to anything, no one will ever love me, I will never achieve anything. When we are young, shame can make us become focused on being compliant and a good child. Shame and submission are procedurally learned adaptive behaviours. To learn something procedurally means that it's an automatic behaviour that we don't have to think about consciously. So riding a bicycle, driving a car, when we become familiar with how to do it, then it's not something we need to consciously think about and our defences work in the same way. And they need to work in that way because we can't spend time thinking about what we're going to do when we need to respond instantly in a situation. So they become procedurally learned responses. Attacks that invoke shame feel very personal, which is why it's so hard to shake in adulthood. When we feel shame, we take it very personally. So it means there's something wrong with us. There's something inherently defective in our character. Being mediocre. Shame can help us to be mediocre. Many antagonists with an impaired sense of self, so this means that people who are abusive that are attacking you don't have a strong sense of self themselves. They feel very insecure and inadequate. 
This means they will attack the talents and the confidence in others as they cannot tolerate the inadequate feelings it triggers in themselves. Antagonists who hold a deep-seated jealousy of others, or in the case of narcissistic characters, who need others around them to not outshine them, it allows them to feel superior. It is a projection of their own subconscious shame onto others. So this image that a narcissist creates of themselves, this idealized image, can't be challenged and they will attack things around them, people around them that challenge that. That's part of their defense. When we feel shame, we round our shoulders and look defeated. This can prevent attacks from antagonists as it de-escalates conflict. It is a damage limitation strategy. So you look defeated. So then this deflects any attacks because you're already defeated. So you don't need to be attacked anymore. Feelings of shame can stop us from achieving in life and lead to self-destructive and self-sabotaging behaviours. It can lead to beliefs of it is not safe to succeed or to assert myself or to be confident and have talents, it is not safe to be happy. So these beliefs become core beliefs that then color that person's view of themselves and the world that they're in and the way other people feel towards them. And this can lead to people not reaching their potential and being mediocre, underachieving. Judith Herman is a psychiatrist who works in the realm of trauma and complex PTSD and she says when a relationship of dominance and subordination has been established feelings of humiliation degradation and shame are central to the victim's experience shame like anxiety functions as a signal of danger in this case interpersonal or social danger like anxiety it is an intense overwhelming affect associated with autonomic nervous system activation. So this is the activation of our fight, flight, freeze or submit responses. Inability to think clearly and desire to hide or flee. Like anxiety, it can be contagious. Triggers of shame. Shame can be triggered by criticism, normal mistakes, feelings of not being perfect, being noticed or being the center of attention or revealing vulnerabilities and needs. This is because these may all have been precursors to abuse with antagonists. Let's have a look at an article on my website, childrenofnarcissist.org.uk, which is called Shame. Children of narcissists will often have lots of feelings of guilt and shame. Shame can often stick like glue. Narcissists shame their children constantly both as a means of control and because they are projecting their own feelings of shame onto their children. And this will be carried into adulthood and will often manifest as feelings of the self being worthless or inherently defective. Shame can be felt by children as young as 15 months old. Shame is a feeling which can become a belief system. So infants and children make meaning from their bodies and will later, after developing language, attach words to explain those feelings. Uncomfortable and shameful feelings may be explained by thoughts of I am stupid or I am worthless. Chronic shame is a procedurally learned response. It can be triggered by events in the environment and can invoke feelings of not being safe and feelings of wanting to hide or to isolate. Shame can manifest as feelings of sickness, wanting to curl into a ball or negative thoughts. Shame is an intense feeling of being unworthy, flawed and defective. The body language of shame is very submissive with the head down, averted eyes and shoulders rounded. This has been learned as it can often diffuse a situation as it is an appeasing behavior. If the body language is not submissive, that may provoke more abuse. Shame is a survival response on a par with fight, flight, freeze and submit and is often reinforced by ways of thinking such as it is not safe to be happy, to succeed, be assertive or to have needs. 
So what can be done to combat our feelings of shame? What's important to know is that narcissistic parents use shaming their children as a tool of control. So in a healthy family, a child might feel shame momentarily if they're being told off for doing something wrong, but then the parent will repair that shame by giving them a hug and soothing them and telling them they love them. In narcissistic families, this doesn't happen. So the child is shamed and then left feeling that shame. Nothing is repaired. To combat shame, we can develop our self-awareness around it. When we notice we are having self-shaming thoughts, we can just become curious about what we're thinking and what the trigger for those thoughts may have been. We can notice our body language and posture, facial expression, what emotional states we are feeling and what thoughts are coming up. We can try experiments such as lifting up our head if our head is down and putting our shoulders back if they are rounded. And we can practice challenging our shame. We can think about how the emotion of shame helped us survive our childhood and thereby reframe its roots and purpose. We can remind ourselves that it is just a triggered body response which is part of our defences, and it is not us. We can also work on our self-compassion. Self-compassion will come naturally when we do challenge that shame, and when we understand it, then it starts to not be so strong and not be so prevalent, and stops being one of our core beliefs about ourselves. Shame is an adaptive response to a hostile environment in childhood that becomes ingrained. But with work, which is self-awareness and self-development, shame can be overcome. So I hope the information in this video was useful to you in understanding why you may have feelings of shame. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.